physical sciences learners and welcome back to another lesson with me, Miss Martins. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at electric circuits and in particular, we're going to be looking at internal resistance as well as looking at EMF within an electric circuit. Let's go. First thing that you need to understand is that in the past, in grade 10, when we initially taught you circuits, we ignored the internal resistance of the battery. We said that the internal resistance of the battery, as well as the resistance of the connecting or the conducting wires, are negligible. This means that we do not include them in our calculations. However, from this point onwards, we can no longer ignore the internal resistance of the battery. Now, what do I mean by internal resistance of the battery? As you can see on my little picture over here, the wide rectangle colored in yellow, that is representative of the entire battery within my electric circuit. The little white resistor, the little white block inside, you can see a little baby R written underneath there, that is representative of the internal resistance that that battery has. Now what you need to understand is that every single battery has its own internal resistance associated with it. That internal resistance is constant, however, it does impact the energy that the battery can provide to the rest of the circuit. Because batteries have an internal resistance, some of the energy of the battery is used within the battery itself. So it's almost as if, if I have a 5 volt battery, my 5 volt battery won't be able to provide 5 joules of energy per unit charge for the circuits, because some of that 5 volts some of that five joules per coulomb charge, per unit charge, is going to be used by the battery. Let me show you. Now, if you have a look at the simulation that I have on the screen here, this is FET simulation, by the way, it's awesome to take a look at electric circuits. I have a battery and I have a voltmeter. Now, if I connect the terminals of my voltmeter across the battery, you will see that this voltmeter reads what we call the EMF of that battery. Now, the EMF is the maximum energy that that battery can provide per unit charge. And over here, we have the official definition of the EMF. So if the EMF of my battery is 5 volts, like I said, then the battery can supply a maximum of 5 joules per 1 coulomb charge passing through it. Now, if I connect that same battery in a circuit and I leave the switch open, watch what happens. As you can see, in my circuit, I have my battery and as you can see on top of my battery it says 9 volts. This is the EMF of the battery. My internal resistance, I set this according to the simulation, is 1 ohm. That means that the battery itself has a resistance associated with itself which is 1 ohm. I also attached another resistor within the circuit of 10 ohms and my switch is open. Now if I connect the terminals of my battery to my voltmeter, so I connect a voltmeter across the terminals of the battery, my voltmeter reads 9 volts. And this will always be the case when the switch is open and there's no current flowing and I attach a voltmeter across the terminals of the battery, that will read the EMF. So the terminal potential difference will be the same as the EMF. As you can see, it's reading the EMF. Now let's remove this, let's close the switch. As you can see, my little charges are flowing throughout the circuit. Current is flowing. That means that there is current. Switch is closed. Now, look what happens when I attach my voltmeter across the terminals of the battery. Do you think it's going to read 9 volts? Well, no. It no longer reads the EMF of the battery. Now note, grade 11s and grade 12s, this doesn't mean that the EMF is not 9. The EMF is constant. It'll always be 9 volts. What this means, however, is the terminal potential difference or the external voltage or the external potential difference or V load, there's lots of different names for it, is now 8.18 volts. So what I can see is when I open the switch, it reads the EMF. When I close the switch, that voltmeter reading drops and the voltmeter now reads what we call V external, 8.18. Now, what happened to the rest of the voltage? What happened to the rest of the potential difference? We refer to that as V internal, or more informally as lost volts. Now, the battery will experience this drop in voltage. So the voltmeter reading will experience, as you can see, 
this drop in voltage due to the internal resistance of the battery. And that's because the battery has to give some of its energy to the battery itself to get those charges flowing through. As you can see here, this is explaining why they are lost volts or V internal within a circuit. And that's just because all batteries have an internal resistance. The charges will encounter resistance when they move from the lower potential negative plate towards the higher potential positive plate. So they're moving within the battery. Here's our formula that we derived. You can see it up top there. I circled it in red. This is the formula that we will be using quite a lot within our grade 11 and grade 12 circuit calculations. You now know that EMF is the reading on the voltmeter across the terminals of the battery when the switch is open or there's no current flowing. I, that big I over there, is your total current, and the total current flows through the circuit and through the battery. Big R is R external, or the resistance of the external circuit, so basically everything besides the battery, and baby R, or little r, is the battery's internal resistance. On the left, we have a situation where my switch is open. As you can see, when my switch is open, there will be no current flowing through the circuit. When the switch is open, the voltmeter connected across the terminals of the battery will measure the EMF. So in this case, the EMF is 1.5 volts. Take note, there's no current flowing through the circuit, and so the internal resistance of the battery does not come into play here. If you look at the other side of the scenario, when I close the switch, so now you can see it's the same circuit, the switch is now closed. Take note that the EMF of the battery, over here it was 1.5, the EMF, so I'm going to write it EMF, is still 1.5 volts, so that didn't change. But what does change is the voltmeter reading across the battery. Now remember, when I connect my voltmeter across the terminals of the battery, this thing will read the terminal potential difference, or V external. When the switch is open, my terminal potential difference, or my V external, is the same as the EMF, so it's 1.5. When I close the switch, current is flowing, the voltmeter reading across the battery drops. So the voltmeter reading across the battery drops, and that's because of the internal resistance of the battery. The voltmeter reading across the battery is now measuring my terminal potential difference, or V external. Your teacher may have referred to it as V external, or V load, or V terminal. So V terminal, V load, or V external, they're all meaning the same thing. And in this case, it's 1.2 volts. So as you can see, the EMF was 1.5 volts. I'm going to call it V external, now drops to 1.2 volts. Now what is the difference between those two values? 0 0.3 volts. Now those 0 0.3 volts are what we call lost volts, or more correctly, V internal. Okay, so it's the energy used within the battery because of the internal resistance of the battery and it generally causes the battery to heat up. The energy is almost converted or transformed into heat within the battery. It's to get the charges moving throughout the battery. So we have three values here. 1.5 volts, in this case, is the EMF when the switch is open and there's no current flowing. 1.2 volts is the V external, or V load, or V terminal. Now think of it as that's the voltage that can be used by the rest of the circuit. So your 1.2 volts, your terminal potential difference, or your V external, or your external potential difference, whatever term you want to use, or whatever term your textbook, your teacher uses, that is the voltage that will be supplied or used by the external circuit. So the resistors, the light bulbs, the appliances within the external circuit. And remember, the difference between the EMF and V external is V internal or V lost. Your lost volts or internal voltage or internal potential difference. So if your question had to say the reading of the voltmeter or the reading on the voltmeter across the terminals of the battery dropped by 0 0.3 volts, that is your V internal. So here's my example that I just did. Remember, in this example, the 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5,
was equal to the 1.2 plus the 0 0.3. The 1.5 we refer to as the EMF, or the reading on the voltmeter across the terminals of the battery when the switch was open and there was no current flowing. Then when I closed the switch and there was current flowing, that reading on the voltmeter across the terminals of the battery dropped to 1.2 volts. And that we refer to as V external or V terminal or V load. Now, 1.5, it was 1.5, it dropped to 1.2. That difference in voltage, that's 0 0.3, we refer to as V internal or lost volts. Now, as you should know from grade 10, V is voltage or potential difference. EMF is a voltage or a potential difference. V external and V internal are both voltages or potential differences. And according to Ohm's law, how can I work out voltage? Voltage is equal to current multiplied by resistance. If I think of it this way and I take my EMF formula, I can now rewrite as instead of V external, remember V is equal to I times R. So V external is equal to I, which is your current. Don't know why it's all writing in purple, doesn't matter. I, which is your total current. And if we're working at V external, we need to use R, big R, which refers to R external. Then, V internal, remember V is equal to I times R. So to get V internal, again, I use I, which is total current. Now, because I'm trying to work out V internal, I use baby R or internal resistance. I hope that makes sense. Total current is used across the board. But if I want to work out V external, I use R external, which is the resistors within the external circuit, big R. If I'm trying to work out V internal or lost volts, I use baby R or internal resistance, the internal resistance of the battery. Now, if you look at this formula, remember I said I or total current is the same across the board throughout the circuit. So I can take I out as a common factor and I'm left with big R plus baby R. So therefore, my formula is the EMF of the battery is equal to the total current multiplied by the external resistance of the circuit plus the internal resistance of the circuit. In videos to come, we'll be going through past paper questions where we look at using this formula. If you'd like to see this, please comment down below. Remember to give the video a thumbs up, share it with your matric and grade 11 friends. See you in the next video, everyone.